الله الرحمن الرحيم. بسم الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على كل أمور الدنيا والدين وصلاة وسلام على سيدنا محمد الأشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم نحن تعلم وتعليم وتذكر وتذكر ونفع والانتفاع والفارة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك في كتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى ودلالة على الخير يبتغاء وجدا ومرضاته وقربه طوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم نسلك العلم لدني والمشرب السوفي الهني وهب يغاني اللهم نسلك العلم لدني والمشرب السوفي الهني وهب يغاني اللهم نسلك العلم لدني والمشرب السوفي الهني وهب يغاني وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين الحمد لله we are doing our we are continuing our classes الحمد لله after a very long break so we are continuing the surah مطففين would anyone like to recite Assalamu alaikum Fakihin. 
Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Okay, so continuing with Surah Mutafifin, we took a first part, the first part of Surah Mutafifin in the previous lesson. Right, but I'll just do a brief revision right, of Surah Mutafifin before we go on to the next part of uh, Surah Mutafifin. And Surah Mutafifin is one of the longest surahs in the uh, in Juz Amma, like in fact one of the longest ones in Juz Amma. Uh, and, and it begins by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warning a certain group of people. Right. And in the in our in, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala him he, him he himself explains to us who is the mutafifin and uh, what are the, the, the mutafifin actually do. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns them of the hellfire, they went to the hellfire. Uh, so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins and says whale. Uh, so whale it is a word to show uh, the, the, the punishment of the hellfire. Uh, so whale it is uh, it is said to be a valley in the hellfire. It is of the worst of punishment in the hellfire. So Allah says, wail to something, you know, wailul lil mutafifin. Or wailul lil, uh, wailul li kulli khumazatin lumazah. Or, you know, wail to the ones who, uh, the, 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 the backbites and the slanderers. Right? So wail, it shows the severity of uh, the sin. Disciple are, uh, disciple are English, you know. So wail, it is a word of azab, right? a word of punishment. And it is a, it is also said to be a, a, a pit. Like a pit in the a valley in the hellfire, right? So hot that even the hellfire, you know, uh, complains about wind. Right? So wind is a is a pit in the hellfire. Right? So Allah says, "Wailul lil, uh, lil mutaffifin." Right? Allah says, "You know, this 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 is this, this severe punishment is for these people who are called the mutaffifin." And who are these mutafifin? Allah Himself describes. So I'm going through quickly here yeah, because we went through it uh, previously, and so I'm giving a, a brief. Uh, this, is a, this is a revision. Eh? So who is the mutafifin? Al mutafifin al ladina iza ktalu ala nas yastawfun wa iza kaluhum aw wazanuhum yuxsirun. Right. So this mutafifin, right? And you might not think their sin is that severe. It's the same thing as the who mazli lumaza, the who maza and the lumaza. Right, because the you know and, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these two this this groups of people, Allah uses the word whale on them, right, to show uh we say now Muhammad you didn't uh, message you in the group, is it? I messaged the wrong number, I don't know why I messaged. Oh she went to the other place. Because I asked I asked in the group uh, who's coming, who's come to inform. <laughs> Right, so uh, Muhammad. Right, so this, so this mutafifin, same thing as the humaza and the lumaza. Right? And we're going to compare the two of them because uh, they, they, they are both, you know, uh, two parts in the Quran or in this Amma specifically where Allah begins his will. Right? So they are two, our two case studies. Right? So the humaza and the lumaza, right, they are people who make fun of other people. They make fun, they mock, right? they, they wink and they laugh and they backbite. Right? This kind of behavior. Without us being told in the Sharia of its severity, most human beings do not see these things as severe. That is why, like in, in our time, right? So if you just look at it, eh? so without guidance from God Himself and from Allah Subhanahu Himself, eh, would people actually think right, that they don't, they know it's bad to actually make fun and to you know it's called bullying you know, in a way to make fun to 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 laugh at people you know to call them names or whatsoever. People know it's not a nice thing to do. Right, it's not a nice thing to do. Right, but but for most people who they call this one the deadly sins. For most human beings. Right, you know, even when you go to school right, and you have like your friends there who are Muslim or non Muslim, even even the Muslims are like like right, they and they and they, they talk ill of someone else. Right, they backbite. Right, or they uh, they they make fun of someone else. Or they talk down on someone else, right? You will not call these people so called like like you know those kind of like like if you compare someone who steals, right? you know you see you see how it goes, right? So by by human perception, by human perception, to do it to somebody else is not that terrible, 
and it was you just mean you're just being mean that's all they brush it off as being mean right? but they won't brush it off as, as you know you're, you're, a, you're a criminal you know or you're, you're such an evil person they use this kind of things they won't they won't they won't, they won't categorize that as that right? but in our time the humaza and the lumaza right? in our time we'll be called the bullies they are the ones who bully other people so in our time now there is an awakening to the to the terrible effect of bullies I bully I all uh, worldwide so especially in the West in America I they, they are seeing how terrible bullying and cyber bullying can 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 affect a person whereas our religion Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already informed us this is one of the worst crimes because it can traumatize a human being right, to a terrible uh, to, 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 a, to a level that is really terrible and a, tra- a trauma from, from bullying so who else would have figured this out and human beings we all need to take it takes it to us a long time right, to actually figure out that bullying is actually a terrible crime it's terrible like Islam you know, puts bullying you know, this kind of like slandering and, and gossiping and, and name calling and at a level that is even worse than Zina you know, Islam puts it at that and so who, who, who would figure out that this kind of behaviour is, is even is to that extent right? like really criminal behaviour like to do this to other people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who tells us that and now we are seeing it right, that the Sharia is right and this kind of behaviour can really destroy a person it can and you've seen with, 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 especially with younger people it can destroy a person so when Allah says well right, Allah is bringing attention to this uh, to this to this this sifat, right? This, uh, this, this attributes, and it's so terrible, right? That, that human beings tend to brush it off. Right? Human beings don't think, don't think it that is it, it will hurt, you know, or it's gonna be that terrible, or like you know, like like don't think so much, don't 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 don't, don't, don't group it as something that is a like a heinous crime. Right? Human beings tend to not see it that way. Right? So when you go to Mutafifin, you will see this happen also. Right? So Mutafifin. Uh, uh, what they are doing? Okay, what are these people doing? Allah says the mutafifin, aladina ida ktalu ala nasi yastawfu. Right, the the mutafifin is the one that when they ask people to wait for the measure, and right, to measure for them weeks when to buy, they force them to give the, not only the full measure but a bit more. Right, yastawfu. Right, yastawfu meaning that they they want they want you know just they they, they ensure you give a bit more. Than what they are actually buying. It means they try to get more freebies. They try to they they they, they, they pressure people right, to give them more 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 more. Right? But when they wait for other people, when they sell to other people, they always cut short. And what they cut short is very small. It's a very small amount they cut short. So instead of a full kilogram, they will give nine hundred and fifty and, and you know nine hundred and ninety five uh, grams. They cut short five grams, for example. So they, they, what they cut short is very minimal. In which most human beings will not see an issue. And most human beings will not see the mutafifin as being deserving of his well, this, 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 this pit in the hellfire. But Allah is saying, yep, they are. Right? These people, they are terrible. Right? They are terrible. Right? They, in them cutting short, there's a few grams. Right? It's a, a bit, you know, or basically when it, when, in our time, right, this can be extrapolated to uh, selling things and over-marketing it. Right, so you promise this and you promise that and you promise a lot of things about your product right, and then when you sell it's all below that right, it's not as what you uh, are portraying and all this is all haram lah. Right, of course you know, they, they always have this kind of this way where they have the McDonald's uh, you know the, 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 the burger in in the advertisement and in real life <laughs> and they always do it right? they all, all called mutafifin so under mutafifin right, so basically like, they, they, they are supposed to give you this and that's what you think you are buying when you buy, you're like, what's the letters? The letters are, it's all about it's all haram. It's all haram. Because... You want people eating? Uh, no, 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 people eating. Nah, you're being cheated. <laughs> and the one who is, the one who is uh, cheating. Uh, it's called the one who is cheating. Right, so it, uh, it's all haram, haram. So if Muslims are involved in this, I say like, you know, advertising, marketing, and whatsoever, right, you must tell exactly what is your product. You must let people know what is this product. Right, so, yeah, for illustration purposes, so that's what they say already. Yeah, they put the same word there, nobody can sue them. Right, but but whether those are or not, <laughs> right? Yeah, they should they should put there, this is not real. <laughs> you know, we don't actually do this. <laughs> you know, like you're buying something else. <laughs> right, so actually if they really want to, even if they really want to be honest, eh, they take picture of the real burger. 
Uh, not the not the pumped up uh, version. Right? And then there's the, I know it's there like stuff whereby they show how they pump it up and how it's actually not real food and like it's actually like I don't know Allah Alam what they do to bread, the bread to make it so nice and fluffy and everything. Right? But basically it is it is cheating. It is cheating because you see it and you think that's what you're buying. Right? Same thing with almost everything in life. <laughs> almost everything in life, you think you're buying something, but actually it's something else altogether. It's all under the motor fifteen. Right? And you see, it's so widespread because most people don't see it as a big deal. Right? It's part of life. Right? You won't get what they're actually advertising. It's part of life. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selling us is one of the worst crimes. Right? The worst crimes to cut short. So not even not, not that they're, 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 they are cheating outright, but they're cutting short. It's not as what they promise. They're cutting short. But when they want to buy from other people, they ask, they, 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 they stress them out. Right? And they say, no, you know, I want this, 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 I want, I want more freebies, I want more this, I want more that. Put in more stuff, put in more stuff. You know, getting, getting on the, on, you know, getting on the, 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 the case of other people. Right? Especially if they're doing it to the poor. And you're like, digging out every single drop from the poor. I'm right, getting every single discount from the poor. And when we went to this, the plus and now I mentioned about uh, a bargaining. I right, say, so well, bargain. If you, if you bargain because you know the price is jacked up. Right, so fair enough. Right, so you bargain to a price that is that is uh, reasonable. Right, but it is it is actually on the side of 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 being a fault if you're bargaining to a price that you know right is they are not going to earn. Right, that means you 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 are forcing them to sell. Right, at a price that is so little, how are they going to earn? They will earn very, very little. And you, you, don't, you actually don't mind paying the real price. But bargaining for the sake of bargaining. Right, and that is a fault. It is a fault. Right, because it's as if you think as if people don't have to earn. They have to have profit. Right, so in a sense, to make it so like, like dirt cheap right, in a way. Then how are they going to earn? Right, so you're not being considerate to the poor. Right, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the Mutafifin. And he says that this crime that they are doing is of the worst of crimes because they are deserving of this pit in the hellfire called wine. They are deserving of it. So this tells us, you know, subhanAllah, like it's really. Culture. Huh? It's our culture. It is our culture, I know. And so for me personally, when it comes to price, I asked for the price. If you give me a price, for me, my, my stand, eh, I don't bargain. I don't. If I can't afford it, I walk away. If I feel that it is uh, overpriced, I walk away. Because for me, like if they want to play the game of overpricing stuff, I don't. Know, I don't know. I don't want to engage. Uh. <laughs> for me, uh, for me, I like to engage. When, if they, if you want to overprice things like that, like pasan, I don't want to for you. Right. So <laughs> that's for that's for me. You can you can bargain if you want to. Not saying that bargaining is wrong. It's not wrong. Right, but it's wrong if you if you bring it down so low. You know, it's really so low. It's really cheap. And for some of us, you go to Malaysia, you go to Indonesia, the things are already cheap. Already, compared to Singapore pricing, it's really cheap. Right, but sometimes you still want to bargain. And it's more, you want. Right, let them have the money. Nah, they're trying to earn some halal, halal money. Let them have the money. And right, we have more cash. Right, let them have and they pay, pay that, that amount. I don't have to bargain every single dollar out of them because send me one. I say in a sense, in a sense. Yes, subhanallah. Right, so so in a sense, uh, that is what it is, lah. And so the mutafifin is doing this. It's our it is our culture. It on both sides. The cheating part uh, of marketing. Uh, it's called marketing strategies now. It's called and it's, it's normal now. It's okay to do now. Right, and we know that uh, well, now now it's like it's all on Instagram and, and Facebook. They have all these adverts coming out. Right, and it looks so good in the advert. When you buy it, it's like what say? <laughs> it's not like what the advert say. You come from somewhere in China and it comes to your house and you're like, <laughs> and then you still buy it next time round. <laughs> and you see it like, no, no, buy anymore, buy anymore, anymore. And then you, and then you see it again, you see another thing. You're like, it looks good, ah? Huh? You buy again. And anyway, it comes, what say? You know, and you can't even do anything about it. You know, because sometimes it's, it's in a sense the the motor fifteen, eh? They are the way of cheating. It's so minimal, it's not worth the fight. Right, so that is how they do it. They, they cheat in a way, it's so it's not, not worth it. Lah. So when you go home, in the, in the time of the system, when you go home and you see it's actually 995 grams, for example, right? That 5 grams that they cheated you off. It's not worth going all the way back there and asking for that 5 grams. Right, so most people just let it go. Right, so simply like that, for us, if you buy something online, 
and then you come you pay like you know an amount to go to the hassle of complaining or whatsoever like hey, chill lah you know like you know you just, so you just end up this you know what whatever lah you know money bent you know, that's, all, that's all money bent alright so you don't actually go through the entire hassle of it and that's how it works same thing even when you have guaranteed products you don't know how many months guarantee or whatever sometimes to actually get the guarantee <laughs> all that it does take a lot of uh, you have to go back to the shop and you have to go and back and forth all that like, it takes a lot of hassle lah like. some people just you know whatever I'm going to buy a new one and then after right, so, so it is a multi yes 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 from the from the word wafa you know what is wafa wafa means to fulfill Ah, uh, so yes, tofu. You force them to fulfill more. Ah, uh, you force yes, tofu on the from the tenth form. You are forcing it on them. We are being, we are being nasty, lah. There's a nastiness here. I, I, same thing like Kumasa and Lumasa. There's a nastiness uh, in their behavior, and Allah touch, and Allah hits like uh, the problem, like on the nail. Allah hits it, and Allah says. Right. Allah says, "Wa idha kaluhum awa zinhum yuxirun." Allah ya zunnu ulaika anhum magosun. So the biggest problem here is that they don't believe they're going to be raised. That's the biggest problem. They don't believe someone is there watching them. Right, their God is watching them, and there will come a day when all of these things will be questioned. Are you wondering what's the hukum of working in the marketing industry? <laughs> Eh, wondering kan I, I only want to say what's the hukum I, I don't know what's the hukum eh, but, but in the sense to, to think about it That's how we Ring our hadith Kan sebuah taqwa eh, What is taqwa So taqwa is, is, is You know when it comes to Buying and selling Taqwa plays a very Big part Buying and selling eh? So are you going to have The kind of taqwa To tell people Really what is your product and to actually tell them you know, that it didn't really actually work, <laughs> like it actually works for a while and it, and it dies off, right? So in the you know, in so Allahu Alam, you know where it stands, right? In 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 Allahu Alam, you know, Allah knows best, right? Where it stands, eh? <laughs> on a day of judgment, because on a day of judgment, all be all be questioned, and all the money halal or haram, because you know you're in a sense you're tricking people, and in the very fact that people feel cheated, that means something wrong already. And if they feel that you know what they bought is not what they thought they bought, I, that already means it's really cheating in and of itself. Is that Islam when it comes to the laws of buying and selling? It's a lot of laws, very stringent laws when it comes to buying and selling to prevent, to actually protect the rights of the seller and the buyer. Both are protected. And it comes a lot of buying and selling Islam. But in our time, because of technology and online transactions. Right, a lot of these laws cannot be actually uh, enforced. Right, it can't actually be enforced. But if you want to, for it to be enforced, then you need to actually allow for the for the customer, right, to send it back, right, and actually by right, if it's not in accordance to what you you marketed, right, then you should actually foot the bill of them sending it back, and you refund them fully. And I know of of companies that buy if you, if you're not happy with it, you can send it back, but on your account. It means you pay for the you pay for the postage. Right. So, that means the so, pays. so 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 when you buy right, you buy the thing you pay for the postage right. Okay. If it comes, it's not as what was marketed. I mean, it's not as as what was as what as what they actually informed you of, okay. right? So I know some companies they allow you to actually send back and have a refund, but you pay for the for the postage ah. This, the, the customer pays for the Yes, the customer pays for the money. But then you won't get the money back anyway for the barang. For the, yes. But you waste money lah. In postage money, back and postage, postage back. Yeah. yeah. You waste money lah in a way lah. But because the company, especially the fault is in the company. Because the company marketed what was not exactly the, the product. Right? So by right, the fault is who? So if someone has taqwa, if someone has taqwa, right, and you are a seller, right, and, and when you sell something, you know, and then it goes there, and the person says, "It's not as what you say. Uh, it's not as what you say." And then the person was, and then and then they say, "Oh, uh, sorry, you want to refund?" And they say, "Okay." Then 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 then, but they still make you pay for all the postaging. And by right, if you have taqwa, you say, "I pay," because it's your it's your mistake, it's your fault. As so you cover all the expenses, right? I mean, if you really want to have taqwa la of this, it's like when it comes to buying and selling it, tijara, you know, going into business. There is a hadith where Rasulullah says that. You know, the, 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 the trader who is 
who is sadduq right who is a uh, truthful i mean trustworthy muslim uh, muslim ma'a shuhada yawm al qiyamah he is with the martyrs and the your judgment so when they ask why is this why is a trader who is truthful and and trustworthy and a muslim together with the ranks of the in, in, in the ranks of the martyrs not anybody the martyrs right? i mean the martyrs who go out and fight fi sabilillah and they get killed right? on battlefield the trader in his shop who is completely honest right? and completely trustworthy he's the same level why right? because it's very difficult in fact they say it's even more difficult to be that trader than to actually go and fight in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's actually more difficult because you know the, the more you tell about the deficiencies of your product people might not buy and that is your livelihood it is most people they will not tell the deficiencies whereas you're supposed to tell if there's a deficiency you're supposed to tell the, 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 the customer okay my product are there this deficiency are you, are you okay with it right and so therefore okay for deficiency I'll sell you cheaper that kind of thing right, but how many people actually do it right, so this mutafifin part is very uh, it is a lot of taqwa to enter into business I think business is very easy eh? business is not easy a lot of taqwa to enter into business right, and to make sure that what you sell is what uh, they are well, it's what you marketed so Allah subhanahu wa he hits on me, he says that Allah yazunnu ulaika anna kumma bu'asun Do these people not think that they are going to be raised? I don't have any, any iman in the, in, the, in the next world That is why this belief, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran always pairs up belief in Allah and belief in the hereafter and In the Quran it is always paired up, right? They believe in Allah and they believe in the hereafter and right, someone might say, how come there the is this pair up? Right, you know, if you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wouldn't you naturally believe in the hereafter? But that's not true. Because the people of Rasulullah Sallallahu time, they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they lack, they, they refuse to believe in the hereafter. In, in a way whereby their belief in God is like self-serving. Right, whereby they use God. So their belief in God is more of like, God is there to protect us. God is there to ask all to us. And that's true. Right, but you don't like the other part of God, whereby God is going to watch us and hold us to account. They don't like that, that you know, uh, that, that situation about God. Right, so they remove that part about God holding us to account. They remove it. So God basically created the creation for us to live and until we die, and that's it. Right, so while we're here, right, God is there to make our wishes come true. For <laughs> that's how they, 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 they treat God. Uh, this, the, the people in the time of Rasulullah so they have their gods they know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they know about the idols and whatsoever but it's not they use God like, it's a using of God uh, to get what they want uh, in this life uh, so they don't they don't actually worship God uh, so, and, and in fact till today a lot of people who actually worship other gods and even some Muslims uh, they worship God in a way whereby to get what they want uh, so the worship of God has been reduced to just you know oh what I want what I want of this dunya now, of course, if you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the akhirah, and that one is a high thing right, for, for the akhirah. Right, so in a sense, they, they remove this idea of the hereafter. Right, and because they have removed it, that means they don't have themselves held to account. There is no holding to account. And when nobody holds you to account, you can do a lot of crime. Because no one sees you. Or you, or you believe no, you can get away with a lot of things. And from there, right, bullying, that's what you call bullying, like the, the, the rich and the powerful, right, were basically, uh, uh, were basically uh, bully the, the poor and the, and, and, and the weak. Right, because no one is holding them to account. So the ones who are up there right, in, the, in, 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 in uh, positions of authority, right, they can do whatever they want to do. They feel they can do whatever they want to do. They can be, they can be kings, they can be whatsoever, because nobody else will hold them to account. And that is what we're seeing in this world. Like all these people in power, they're doing a lot I mean, of, of heinous crimes because they don't believe there's another power above them. So Allah says that is, that is the exact problem. You don't believe there's going to come a day where you have to answer to all of this that you are doing like, on this earth. And so even that five grams you cut short, uh, even that, that small, you know, you, you, you cheat people. You know, in, you know, you know how, <laughs> this to me, you know how like, they always say fresh lettuce? And they always say in their in their advertisement, they say fresh this and fresh this and fresh that, right? So not fresh, <laughs> right? Whenever you buy, like it's so soggy and it's not fresh and whatsoever. But you see, the thing is that it's too difficult to actually complain about it. Yeah, but it's too hard. It's it's too hard to complain, right? You, you don't want to like Allah, whatever lah, eat lah. 
you know, it's unhealthy anyway. <laughs> right? So why you want to fresh up this, right? Because the entire thing is unhealthy anyway. Right? So you just eat the entire thing. Right? So subhanAllah. So Allah... Huh? You're not a business person, but you sold something once or twice, and you're very honest, right? <laughs> you sold. Yeah, you sold. Okay, okay. Inshallah, dapat dapat the hadis. <laughs> It defects. You feel a difficulty in saying it. Yeah, my phone is off now and then. <laughs> oh, but oh, oh, off on its own. <laughs> the battery finish. The battery finish very fast. The person buy already, but then they let them regret. Do they have the right to exchange? In Islam, by right, there's a 3D exchange. Oh, it's a 3D exchange. Can lah. I mean, if they agree, if they agree to it lah, if they agree to it lah. Mm-hmm. Yeah lah. But by but by right, there is that thing lah. Mm-hmm. Yeah lah. So 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 it could also be that way lah that they did spoilt it in mm-hmm. some way, right? So Allah Hu Alam. Maybe it's counted lah. You sell your phone in that way. Tell all your defects. You get all right. I got shahid. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be with the shuhada. I'm on kiyama. <laughs> So, I mean, possibly, possibly. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not uh, that stingy. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give yeah, even for one. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I mean, it's taqwa. Lah. It's taqwa. It's really taqwa. You just, you know, you just think to yourself, on a day of judgment, <laughs> right, you know, on a day of judgment, it's going to be very hard. Right, so, and, and we also, you put yourself in their shoes. Right, if you buy someone else's uh, product, and then you're like, alamah. This thing off oh, like the guy I bought one from my friend, she bought from Singapore, so I just got it for her. And then uh, the, the, the 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 iPad keeps offing by itself, right? So the person who sold didn't ask anything about it. So we tried to refund and whatsoever couldn't, uh, because they like oh you bought it, you bought it oh it's your fault it's your fault, and they keep they put it on you. And you're the one who caused it to be like that. When I use it, then all by itself what? Like kind of thing. So I mean then you feel you feel cheated right? I mean you spend so much money you feel cheated, right? But then uh, so so on our part we don't we never do it lah. Cheating. So something in the hadith, mana rasana la isaminna. Whoever cheats us, he is not of us. It's not from the Muslims. The ones who cheat are the uh, other people, eh? other Muslims especially. Right. So Allah says they don't, they don't, they don't actually believe in the, in the hereafter. That's why they can cheat even one gram. Right. Whereas, whereas the people of Medina in time of Rasulullah, so even up to today, if you buy things from them, they will give you more. Then the weight itself. If you ever buy dates from the date market in Medina or whatever, they will they will they sell it for like hundred grams. But after they weigh hundred grams, when you see it's hundred grams, then they will take a handful and they put more, right? Because of their taqwa, and they know that when they do that, Allah will give them more, right? So in the sense, in in, in his religion, right, what is material, right, does not work in a way, right? So, so people might think that if I give more, right, I will get less, because that's material. What what material what, what material logic tells us. Right, but we believe in like Shaykh will say the metaphysical, mm-hmm. right? the spiritual or the metaphysical meaning beyond the physical, right? So we believe that the more you give, the more you you get, right? Or like the, for example, the more you you pray in the night, the more awake you are in the day, right? So in the sense, by the physical, you're like no, no. If I sleep through and have a good night's rest, then I'll be awake. Right? You say it to yourself, right? But then or like even now water fasting, eh? And the less you eat, you're even hungry. But the more you eat, the more hungry you get. Ah, it's actually true. 
Right, so the physical also actually makes sense. Right, the, the, what, what you want to eat? The more you want to eat, the more you want to eat. <laughs> the you want to eat. <laughs> so it's not actually hungry, it's just more nafsu. So the more you eat, the stronger your nafsu. Lah. So the more you actually want to eat. Right, but the more you, you abstain, the less you need to eat. So the less you sleep, the more you make your Yeah, it's true. It's true, it's true. The more you sleep, the more sleepy you get. It's true, it's true. Right? So in the, sense, in the physical sense, you're like, how come, how come that's the way? I'm the Bali Asian. Right, it's like not, not, it doesn't seem to, to fit logic. Right, but that's how it works. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially when it's done for ibadah. If you're doing it for ibadah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you more. Right, so, but it's the people who believe in the hereafter. They believe in a higher power, the one who provides and the one who gives. Right, so you're not afraid right, in, 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 this, in this situation. So he says here, يَوْمَ يَقُومُ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ So Allah, Allah emphasizes what is this day whereby they will be raised. Uh, what about this day that you should fear? You should fear the standing. Uh, so Allah يَذُنُّ أُولَٰئِكَ أَنَّهُمْ مَبْعُوثٌ لِيَوْمٍ عَظِيمٌ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He first says, Do the people not think right, or not believe that they will be raised after death? The thing is, it's after this, this life. And it's to see, if a person believes in goodness and they believe in justice, you actually naturally have to believe in God. Because if you don't, you know, people think it's the other way around. They say, oh, I believe in justice, so I don't believe in God. Because I see a lot of injustice in this world. Right? So the, thing is, the, the, the way they think is, 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 the, is opposite. Right? So because, for us, because we believe in justice, and we believe in goodness, ultimate goodness, we necessarily believe in the next world. Because this world does not settle it. Right? Many things go through this world and it's not fair. It's really not fair. So because we see it, we believe there is a next world that will make everything uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, leveled up. Right? So for the, for, the, for the atheists, they will say, oh, because it's not fair here, there's no God. Right? But we say, no, 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 there's another avoid. Right, they will level things out. So because it's not fair here, there is a God. So we go in the opposite uh, uh, reasoning right, as to the, the belief in God. Right. So Allah says, Allah has, two, uh, uh, Allah has two descriptions for this day. The first description is, it is a great day. Right, it is a great day you cannot imagine the greatness and the severity and the heaviness of this day of judgment and it's a day whereby the people will stand in front of a lot of the worlds right, the one and Rabbul Al uh Rabbil Alameen that whenever Allah says the Rabb Allah is showing his tarbiyah. Right, he has been he has been nurturing you, he has been giving you. So on a day of judgment he's gonna ask you all about what he has been giving to you. So so two things there about this day of judgment that Allah is pointing out that it is a great and it's a horrific day and also it is a day whereby you stand in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with no excuses. So, yeah. the Alameen, Kalla. So, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He goes into talk about in the next word. So, the, only the first part of the surah speaks about this mutafifi. Right? Later on, the surah also ends going back to the earth. So, the first part is about the earth. On this earth, there are people who are, ch- who are cheaters. And right? then the surah goes into talking about the hereafter. And so it goes into the, 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 the disbelievers and the criminals. Then it goes into the righteous. Right? About the, the punishment and about the reward. And then the surah goes back into the situation on this earth right now. And then the surah ends off with talking about the hereafter again. Right? So, it's interlacing. Right, so, that, so, that, so, that, so uh, to, to teach us right, that as far as we understand right, when we look at this world we must always have a reflection of how it will be in the hereafter so all that happens to you in this world right, for you to be able to judge it you place it on the you know, on the scale of the hereafter how it will manifest so how you see the surah in this, and, and the Quran does this you know, throughout the Quran there is this part whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about uh, the dunya things in this dunya and then about the akhirah and dunya again and the akhirah again and dunya again and the akhirah again right, so as to always to, to, to train the human being or the Muslim to train the believer that whatever you look at you need to see the akhirah reality of this thing in any situation see how it will manifest in the akhirah so for example the mutafifin lah. so the mutafifin right, if he can really see it, these 5 grams that you cheat somebody off how will that manifest in the day of judgment Right, if you can really see that it's fire, 
that you are taking from other people. You're eating this fire into your stomachs. You see it. And so you see that the, the, the akhira reality of it, you run away. So same thing that, for example, uh, backbiting or slandering. Right? So you see it as how Allah has taught us. Right? That slandering and backbiting, it is basically eating the flesh of someone else. And so you see, so when, when you're, so for example, like if, if you're having like coffee or having, having tea with someone, uh, you know, and, then, and then they begin backbiting. So for you to just imagine this drink that you're drinking is black. Right? And this cake you're eating is the flesh of the person you're backbiting. Right? Or for you to imagine that as this person is talking, your good this is going down, 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 down. And going to the scale of the, of the very person that you are talking about. So that's what it means by you know by by, by having a, a worldly situation, then an other worldly situation to show the 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 reality of it, right? The the truth of it, right? In the entire view of dunya and akhirah, mm-hmm. uh, you must see it that way. So if you only if you are so you know uh, myopic in a way, or you are so limited to just seeing the reality of it in this dunya, you will not see the severity of it. You will not see how horrendous it is in reality. But if you, if you put it into the akhirah, or you see, oh, that is, that is, that is terrible. Right? Even, 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 and, and that also goes back for wasting time. When you waste time, you see that one hour. And Rasul some himself, in his hadith, he actually teaches us about this. Right? You will see it on a day of judgment. Right? A, a, a man in paradise will, will uh, regret not saying one more subhanallah or one more Allah Akbar. Or one more la ilaha illallah or whatsoever, they will regret not doing it. Right? The man on the day, so so says the hadith even teaches us right, how this will manifest, right, how within time will manifest on the day of judgment. Eh? Right? So so you so so you understand that eh? that's why the Quran many times you will use this throughout the Quran many times it will interlace the situation in this world. Right, and then the hereafter, and the world, and the hereafter, and the world, and hereafter. Right, so like in this surah is a very clear example because it, later in the surah you will see that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala speaks about the people of this world in the dunya laughing at the believers, and then at the end of the surah Allah says the believers are laughing. And there's two parts in the surah that there is yet hakun, yet hakun. And if you don't memorize, if you don't know the, the the meaning of the of the surah, you may go in circles. Right, so there's one part of the surah whereby Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. Right, uh, for the Yom Aladina Ejramu, I'm gonna say no more. Right, there is, a, there is a verse, right? Uh, yeah, so, so in the Ladina Ejramu, sorry, in the Ladina Ejramu, can in the Ladina Amanu Yadu Hakun. I said, those who commit crying, they are laughing at those who are believers. At the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for the Yom Aladina Amanu Min Al Kufar Yadu Hakun. Right, so on this day, those who believe will laugh at the disbelievers. That's how they used to laugh at them. On this day, the believers will laugh at them. So you see how the, the, the parallel happens. Eh? Right, so Allah shows the, the dunya, and on the, the reality of it is that they are the laughing stock, right? not the, the believers. And you see that. Eh? And the same thing with the, like, those who be sadaqa and whatsoever, right? you sadaqa in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to see it as you're putting money in your account in the akhirah. So when you see it that way, you don't see a loss. As you put a thousand, you put five hundred, you put you know you put you put an amount. Right, what is it, what is what is it? Right, is it is basically you transferring from your account here to your account in the akhirah. Right, and of course Allah will will multiply. Right, how many times will multiply in the akhirah? And it will and it is permanently there. And which is why in the hadith Rasulullah will say, you know, who would like to buy you know a house in paradise? Who would like to buy you know a, a well in paradise? Who would like to buy you know, a tree in paradise. So they say, yeah, so how do we buy a well? Or how do we buy a tree? Or how do we buy... Then they say, you do it here. And you give it to the poor. Right? And you will have one in paradise for you. Right? So this is how he teaches us how do we see the reality of things in this world. Right? So you all understand that point. Eh? <laughs> mashallah. I mean, mashallah, when you see the Quran, mashallah, it's really, it is teaching you how to see things. Right, in this dunya so that you don't you're not so in a sense you're not so spiritually immature it is spiritual immaturity to just see this dunya and you see right that you want revenge in this dunya that you want this in this dunya, you want you want things to happen in this dunya itself whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that if you forgive people and you go along you let things go you allow for it right, there will be more for you in the akhir right, don't, 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 don't be afraid 
Right? So if you can see that, then you have a spiritual maturity that you can just walk away right? from, uh, from, from anyone who has, you know, in a sense, cheated you, walk away. Right? You know, inshallah, on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will handle. Or someone who has slandered you, you walk away. You know, in the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will handle. Right? Inshallah, that's called spiritual maturity right? in a person. Right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So right after talking about the mutafifin Allah goes straight into the, 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 the next word And he says Kalla right. Kalla is a word to scold right. To scold or to say truly right. there, there are two words used for the word Kalla So Kalla can be a zajr right. It can be a scolding Is it enough? Right. You know, or, like, you know, or to say you know, Whatever they're doing you know, is, just, is, is, is so terrible right. Khalas right. Enough or Kalla will say the truth of it is right? or truly it is right? they have to understand what the matter is right? Kalla the surah so again with the, with the, with the dunya, dunya akhirat uh, interacing the word Kalla appears in the surah quite a number of times Kalla right? to, to, to stop that, that uh, the argument that they might be giving right? and so in a sense the Mutafifin might be arguing you know what we are doing is not you know it's, it's, it's not very well it's a small bit you know we take only a small bit from what people what people People buy from us only a small amount will not hurt them. It's like, a, like, a, like even an amount like that, it won't hurt them. If you sell cloth, for example, and you just cut short a bit, you one inch you cut short, it won't hurt them. They won't even notice it anyway, right? And then someone might say that, and they might argue against it. So it goes color, right? Enough. There is no argument. It is a sin and it's a terrible sin. So color in the kitab al fujari la fi sidji. Uh, for surely the, the, the book or the records or the fujar and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word fujar and whenever he uses, he uses a word to describe the criminals you know to describe uh, evil doers you must pay attention he says kuffar he says fujar al fasiq right? there are different words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses to describe evil doers the fujar they are people who openly sin with no remorse and no regret these are the fujar and the worst of the worst of uh, of sinners, eh? the fujar. Right, so, kalla inna kitab al fujari la fi sijin. Right, so, the, 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 the fujar is the word fajr. Right, so, fajr is a break of dawn. Right, so, fajr means something that manifests itself. Right, fajr, it breaks the dawn, it manifests itself. So, the fujar, right, in a society whereby people are not that evil, they manifest themselves. Uh, and they do it in the open and they don't care. They're not even, they're not bothered by it. They say, I do whatever I want to do and I will cheat and nobody can stop me from cheating. And this has happened in our time whereby big companies, and you just mentioned Boom McDonald's, and big companies outrightly, they don't, they don't, they don't uh, sell uh, what they actually market. Uh, outright, it's outright. It's an outright uh, situation. And, and there is no regret and there is no remorse and there is no changing. And the fujar. Right, so the one who sins outrightly, yeah. In the kitab al fujari la fi sijin. And their, their, uh, their, their book is in the sijin. What is the sijin? The sijin, huh? It's a jail. Uh, sijin is a jail. Right, uh, the sijin is a jail. Uh, but what is this jail? Uh, right, why is the book in the jail? And uh, why is Allah jailing up the book? Uh, the because Allah is for sure the book of the fujar. I said the book of the Fujar it shows what is recorded of what they will do or have done. And if their book is in the jail, right, that means that they are already in this jail. And what is this jail? This jail is basically so this book, eh, first of all, about the book. The book in it contains every act that the Shayateen and the Kufar and the evil people will do from the beginning of time to the end of time. This book contains it. Right, so all of it uh, is in this book. And this, this jail that they say, speak about, they say it is, it, is, it is the lowest point of the earth, or of the hellfire. It's the lowest point. It is kept there. Right? So it is locked up. It is kept there. And the people who act on what is in this book, right, they will be dragged down and they will be in this place. And people who act on, 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 uh, on this book. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the kitab of Fujur of Sijin, وَمَا Sijin. And whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, adrakama, adrakama, in the past tense, it shows that whatever is going to be spoken about, you will never know what it is exactly until you actually see it. And it is said that everybody will see the hellfire. It is said. But you won't, you won't feel it 
but you will be you will be shown to you. like how Rasulullah SAW on, 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 on Israq Mi'raj he saw the hellfire like it was shown to him so he didn't suffer from the hellfire at all he was, not, he was not touched by the hellfire but he could go through the hellfire and see the punishments in the hellfire for him to narrate to his ummah of what he saw in the hellfire Right, so it, uh, and it's a hadith of Rasulullah says that there was a day where I saw hellfire, and I've never seen anything more horrendous or more evil right, than what was in the hellfire. Right, so it is said on the day of judgment, it is said like that I've said everybody will go through the hellfire. It means they will see the hellfire. Right, and and in a sense, the the believers or the righteous, they will see it, so that this will intensify their joy. And the enjoyment in paradise, because you saw what you were saved from, you saw it. You don't feel it at all. No, for that I'm feeling it. Nor will you smell it. Nor will you have any experience of it, except that you will see it with your eyes. You will see the punishment, and you see what happens if you burn fire, and then you go past it. So when you go to paradise, you be full of gratitude to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, to the highest form of gratitude. Right, the highest form of joy that Allah SWT has put away from the hellfire. And this is about the hellfire. Right, so, so this sijin right, is all the way down right, in the lowest part of the hellfire. Right, for, these pe- for, for these people who are outright sinners against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, wa ma adraka ma sijin means you will never know what is a sijin. Exactly, you will never know. Kitabu marqum. Yes, of the Quran, that means you will never know exactly what it is. If it's Wama Yudarika, if it's in the present tense, Wama Yudarika, that means there was a possibility of you knowing this. In Surah Abasa, if I know it, Wama Yudarika. In Surah Abasa, in Surah Wama Yudarika, because of the blind man that came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the next surah, we're going to go, no, there's a few more surahs after this, we go to Surah Abasa. In Surah Abasa, we see the word Wama Yudarika. How you know what will make you know that he might that he might uh, purify? And so it says Rasul could possibly find out if this kafir will purify and believe. He could, but when things about the hereafter, the akhirat, Allah will always say adraka. And for example, al qari'a, al qari'a, wa ma adraka. So what will make you know what is the qari'a? You will not know. Until it actually happens, you will know. But Yudrika is something that is possible for you to know. We will see Korea. Al Qari'a is the day of judgment. Not the day of destruction. The day of the judge, judgment itself. Al Qari'a is the last day of the earth. The last day of the earth. Al Qari'a. Yeah. The fire will also see the fire. Yeah, the fire and the day of judgment. So. It, Allah alam, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Yeah, Allah, Allah knows best. So, kitabun marqum. Kitabun marqum, marqum meaning makhtum. Makhtum meaning it is sealed. It's a book that is sealed. Right? What does it mean by it's sealed? Right, that means everything has already been written right, of what is to be done. And the evil people have been written in, the, in this book that they are the evil people and they will be in the hellfire. So, it is sealed. Right, here... Kitabun Marqum appears two times in this in this part, and also later when Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala speaks about the righteous people, like Kitabun Marqum also the Abra, the righteous people. Eh? Then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says Wailu again a second while. Eh? So two whiles in this in the surah. Wailu yawma idin lil mukazibin aladina yukazibuna biyawmin din aladina yukazibuna biyawmin wa ma yukazibu bihi. كل معتد أثيم إذا تتلى عليه كلا بل ران على قلوبهم ما كانوا يكسبون. Right, so Allah so now Allah he goes he stops there for a while. He goes into ويل يوم إذا للمكذب. So now those who deny, right, those who lie and they deny. So again the same pits in the hellfire. For these people, Yawma is in meaning on a day of judgment. So he goes deeper in the day of judgment. On that day, those who deny, right, the, uh, uh, for them will be this, this destructive or this, this horrific pit right, in the hellfire. So who are these mukazibin? 
الَّذِينَ يُكَذِّبُونَ بِيَوْمِ الدِّينَ are the ones who deny the day of judgment. So you see there's a repeat from the first part of the surah. Allah is repeating it. I to drive down the point, you know, getting the point. I the 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 the, the, the source of your of your uh, sinning, the fujar, and uh, how people can be so open in their sinning. The source of it is the disbelief or denial of a day of judgment. That is the source of it. Eh? So Allah didn't you can do and be our midin. What ma you can do be his not all makes it clear. The people who who disbelieve in this or, or, or deny this, this day of judgment, who are these people? Allah you can do be Illa kullu mu'atadin asim. Right, mu'atadin, right, the ones who, mu'atadin is the one who goes past every head. That means every boundary. They transgress past every single boundary that Allah subhanahu has placed in, has, has, put, has put in place. They transgress. Asim, that means always continuously on sin. And the entire life is just that they're drowning in sin. Are the people who deny the day of judgment, and it, and so in a sense it shows cause and effect. It is because they deny the day of judgment that they are drowning in sin, and because they are drowning in sin, they have to deny the day of judgment. They don't want to be held account to the sin that they are they are committing. So it, it is in a circle. So in a sense, the more they they are they are they are they are sinful, the more they cannot afford to believe in the day of judgment, because to them there's there's too much to account for. On the day of judgment. So and because he denied the, the day of judgment, they need to do more sins lah. Then after, and so Allah Subhanahu says, "Kalla bal rona ala." So so, wa ma yukadubi la kulu mu'ad nasim. I the one who goes past every uh, every boundary or every uh, a limit that Allah Subhanahu has put in place. Asim, the one who is continuously in sin. Ida tutsla alayhi ayatuna qala asafiru al awwalin. So a person may ask, how can these people deny the day of judgment? I can't they hear the Quran and what the Quran says? Because the more you go to the Quran, the more it becomes very clear to you the day of judgment. And so you're wondering, like, are they, hear, are they hearing this? And what Allah is telling us about the day of judgment. So Allah tells us when the ayat is being read to them, and ayat here can be a few things. As you mentioned, ayat can be the ayat of the Quran. Ayat can be Rasulullah himself. They see the Prophet themse- uh, themselves. Or ayat can be the, the alam. Right, the 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 creation of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So when we when 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 you hear the Quran being read, they say, "Oh, these are all stories, I right, stories of people of the old of old people of last time stories. It's all fables. They call asafirul awwali. I all fables of long ago. It's all myths. I right, from from before. Then really believe in this. Now, if you remember, you know, uh, I don't know if you remember when you when when we were young in primary school, then I always remember this 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 big book. They have a big book on the Ark of Noah. If you remember, you don't remember Premier One. Okay, I remember. Alright, so anyway, I know when Premier One will do this big book reading right in in, in school. You mean it's really big book, kind of that? Yeah, it's called a big book. Yeah, yeah. All of us went through it, kind. They all go yeah, through yeah. it. So I mean, but then when I remember the one. Which stories I went through, lah. But yeah, I know the size of the book is this big, eh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's called the big book. Right? It's one of Singapore's uh, methods in in uh, in basically in uh, teaching English. And one of the very effective methods in teaching English to the non-English speakers. Right? So, because all of us are from generations before us who were not English speakers, right? so even our our grand our parents or our grandparents right, were not English. Speakers. So, in 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 in, in the span of one or two generations, Singaporeans became English speakers, which is actually, which is actually in a sense like a marvelous job they did lah, in a way, because just above us or two generations above us, they were completely not English speakers. And so to come to this point whereby everybody is an English speaker, right, is from their own uh, syllabus and whatsoever they do. Like. So they this big book, right, they had this remember big book. They had the story of the Noah of Noah's Ark. Right, Noah's Ark. And in the entire story, right, the entire point of the story is about the animal going into the into the into the boat. So animal go in, animal go in, animal go in. Right? Nowhere in the story is mentioned why the ark was built. Okay, so primary one lah, primary one tell primary one kids. That? I remember that. Uh, there was no story of of. So so all the kids understand about Noah's ark is 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 a boat that's animals inside. That's all. So as I grew up, all I thought about Noah's ark was that it's a boat, and we know it's inside and got a lot of animals. Oh, so you uh, put Nabi Noah inside. Uh, no, Noah. <laughs> I don't put Nabi Noah inside. No, I mean you. The storybook did not have but No, they spoke about Namino. It's called Noah's Ark. The whole story is about Noah's Ark. So the whole story is about animals. 
there is no like you know so the, it's, it's basically stories of the old so when they talk about stories of, 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 of Nabi Noah all they talk about is that oh he had a ship or he had an ark and animals inside there was a big flood and that was it there was no mention like even in the, in the time of Jerusalem there was no mention by these people when they hear all these fables like, they, they call it fables but they're real stories there is no mention about what did these people do right that this that this flood was actually a bala it was actually a uh, you know it was actually a punishment onto them and Allah sent the flood to destroy the people to to, to, to drown all the people who were in the time of Nabi Noah why? because they were open sinners so the point of the story right in, in, in being narrated as a, as a story of the past they lose the point and they focus on something else altogether right so in a lot of the prophet's uh, stories you will find it's happening right especially when it's narrated by by, uh, by other sources Right, they will not mention the, 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 the big, the real problem right, of all of these things, the real problem. I do not mention that. Right, they will mention the, the other part of the story, right, in, in, in a sense. Eh? Right, so here we see, right, so, when, when, so when they are told about the Quran, right, and the Quran mentions all these prophets of the past, they say, oh, we know all these stories, we know all these stories. It's all, you know, old fables or old uh, myths of the past. Right, and they brush it off. Why? Because they don't want to actually pay attention to what the Quran is saying about these stories. The Quran always gives the the the, the point of view of the story that Allah wants us to focus on. So when Nabi Noah's story, for example, the whole, the Quran keeps talking about how Nabi Noah called onto his people over and over and over and over again. Right? The part about the animals being in two is only a very small part <laughs> in the story. Right? But the the bigger part of the story is about Nabi Noah's da'wah to the people. Right, but how people have you know, they have changed the stories right, to become very uh, meaningless right, in a sense so when, when you hear the story of Rasul Sassam they will say oh these are all fables all myths from the past you know all about you no know, no and Hood and, and Samud and, and Saleh they say oh, we, know, we, know, we, know, we know we know we know we know but you don't, you, don't, you don't want to actually listen to what caused the destruction of these people because they are the, they are doing the same things as these people used to do they are doing the exact same things. And they don't want to hear it. So they call it Asafi Rul Awwali. Stories of the past, you're not interested in all the stories of the past, you don't want to hear. Right. Kalla. Allah says, Kalla bal rona ala hulubim ma kanu yaksibun. Allah says, Kalla again. So Kalla again, Allah is calling them enough. Right? It is not stories of, of the past, it is not fables. So enough. You are not listening to this Quran. And now Allah points out why they are not listening to this Quran. Allah says, Rona ala qulubihim. Rona, that means blackness has come over their hearts. Because they are so, you know, uh, they're, they're so uh, uh, into sinning. And they are so consistent on sinning. Every sin appears a dot on the heart, like a nukta, a dot. Right, so more and more and more dots goes over their heart, it covers their heart, they can no longer see the truth. And this is because of what? Because of their motofifin. And because of their cheating here and there. Right? They become hardened. They don't really believe in the hereafter anymore. Right? They, 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 they hope that there is no hereafter. Right? Because they don't want to be held to account. Right? They, when they hear all the, all those uh, uh, verses and all those warnings of, of them, they brush it off. They don't want to hear it. Right? Why? Because their hearts have become hardened. And here Allah shows us the danger of sin. And God, these people, the Mutafifin, it was not said that they are disbelievers. The Mutafifin, they said that they are cheaters. And so it could be believers who are cheaters. So it's not said clearly that they are cheaters, they are, they are, they are disbelievers. Eh? The Fujar here, it tends to be the disbelievers, but Fujar can also be believers who are blatantly sinning. It could be that. Right? So, so, so in their sinning, small sin, they call it small or their big sins, it makes their hearts harden. So rona, basically there's a crust. Right? A crust over their heart, right? It has overcome their heart. Ala mm-hmm. kanu yaksibun. And what they themselves earned. It's from their own hands. And this is something that is throughout the Quran. That those people who are being punished in the hellfire, right? they themselves earn their ending. Allah is not unfair. And they themselves earn the and they themselves refuse to listen and they themselves were uh, filling up their lives with uh, with sin right? against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So Rona ala kulima kanu yaksibun. Kalla. So again another kalla. Eh? So, so far we've seen three kallas. 
So again, no, rather. So now the kalla here, it means truly. Haqqan. Right, truly. Innahum arrabbihim yawma'idhin lamahjubun. Right, they will not be able to see their Lord on this day. Right, and this shows Allah's anger with them. They will not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will not gaze at them. And any part in the Quran whereby you see, you know, it is said to the people of the hellfire, right, certain things. It is always the angel that is saying, right, angel uh, Malik, right, Malik, the custodian of the hellfire, he is the one who is speaking to them, not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah does not speak to the people of the hellfire. He does not. Right, they are, yeah, this is a, this is a proof. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not allow them to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nor speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah shows His anger on them on the day of judgment. So, kalla innahum arrabbihim yawma'idhin lamahjubun thumma innahum lasalu jahim thumma yuqalu thumma yuqalu hadha alladhi kundum bihi tukazzibun So then they will, be, they will be roasting in the hellfire in Jahim. Jahim is also a level in the hellfire. The hellfire has a lot of names. They've got Jahannam, got Jahim, got Wail, right? got uh, um, uh, Al-Aniyah. Right? They have a few parts, a few, there, there are a few names of different parts of the hellfire. So Jahim is one of them. And he said that Jahim is the lowest part. It is said. Uh, Jahim. Uh, so, ثُمَّ إِنَّهُمْ لَصَالُ الْجَحِيمِ ثُمَّ يُقَالُ And then it will be said to them, so the one who is saying here is not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the one who is saying here is Mal- uh, Malik. Uh, so قَالُ لَهُمْ right, It is said, it is, it is uh, Malik, right, the angel. Uh, so it will be said to them, this is what you used to disbelieve in. Uh, you will see it. And it's from Allah's mercy that Allah has revealed this verse to show them the reality of the next world before you, the, it actually comes. So before you, it's being said to you, this, right, this is what you're, you're, you're disbelieving in, uh, Allah now says it. Uh, it will be said to you, this is what you're disbelieving in. On the day of judgment. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from such a uh, uh, blinding state. Right? It comes, it's, it's just blindness. To not want to hear the warnings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah flips and he speaks about the righteous. Kalla inna kitab al abrari la fi ailiyin. Wa ma adra kama ailiyun. Kitab al marqum. Yashhaduhu al muqarrabun. Inna al abrara la fi naim. Al al arak yanzurun. Ta'arif fi wujuhim nadra. Ta'arif fi wujuhim nadra al naim. Yusqaun min rahik al maktum. Kitab al misk. Wa fi thalika falatana fasin. And Allah subhanahu wa ends the story the, the part about the, the people of the paradise by and for this may those who want to strive or compete compete lah I compete for this high parts of paradise so inshallah the next time round I will continue right with the abroad inshallah right, so today we took a lot of the fujjah you have taken them before but it's a revision for us eh? inshallah any questions about this Inshallah, we have a few more surahs to finish this Amma. We have Infitar, then we have Abasa, then we have Takwir, then we have Abasa, then we have Nazi'an, then we have, we have uh, Surah Naba. Huh? Huh? After you all, we're going to continue, we're going to continue, which is the Barak. If you want to stop, you can stop. It's up to you all. It's been two years already, eh? I probably I thought you will finish it by end of this year, but I think possible lah uh, end of this year. And this amma and two and a half years. All right, so we'll stop there, inshallah. Salawatullah. Of this amma, you can do a summary here. We can. You can do a summary of this amma. Because this amma basically is about the day of judgment and about instilling uh, uh, belief and also taqwa about a day of judgment. And this amma. Thank you.